Hey, what's up guys, it's Tuber here and welcome back to a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to make profit investing in CSGO skins in 2020. So first of all, who am I? So I'm a guy, I'm a, I'm a gamer, I'm a YouTuber who has been collecting skins for several years. I've, I guess I've been collecting skins technically since 2016, but I've been doing it more seriously since around like 2017, 2018. Like I've, I've traded really high tier skins for a really long time. I've owned the number one pattern Karambit Blue Gem. I've owned multiple Scar Pattern Blue Gems. I've had like Dragon Lords, Medusas. I've actually, I've collected every skin in the game as well. I don't know, overall, I have made a pretty decent amount of money off of, you know, trading and investing in skins. Speaking of which, what is investing? So investing is when you basically buy stuff or trade for stuff at a low price and sell it or flip it for a higher price later down the road. So for example, like if you bought like a $5 skin and sold it for $10, then that profit is basically, you know, the investment profit. By doing this, by investing in skins, you can actually go from relatively not a lot of money. You can go from maybe a couple hundred dollars or maybe a hundred dollars to like a thousand dollar plus inventory. Keep in mind though, it can take a very long time depending on which skins you pick up and depending on the overall trends of the market. And of course there are a lot of risks too, because Valve could just drop an update that could just completely destroy trading and they could like end the CSGO economy. So like you never really know. Also, people could just stop playing the game. People could just get bored of it and then the prices will naturally drop. So there's a lot of factors and there's no guaranteed profit in this, but you can make pretty decent profit if you're smart and if, if you play your cards right. Anyways, let's get into the video's sponsor. Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about itemstat.com. So I want to give a big massive thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. And today we're going to be talking about this site because it does tie into the overall topic of the video. So I think it's definitely relevant and I think it would offer you guys a lot of value. If you guys want to go check it out the link will be in the description down below and if you guys do have any feedback for the site if like if you want to help make it better you can either just leave some feedback down below right here or you can just leave a comment down below on this video whoever leaves the best feedback in the comments on this video will actually get a ten dollar skin so pretty dope but overall though the site is really good for people looking to trade or invest in csgo skins because it it lets you check the market trends it lets you see the prices of skins it lets you see like which skins are going up in price which ones are going down like it does a lot of cool things we're obviously going to go more in depth the basic Basically, you can like scroll down and you can find pretty much any skin in the game or any skin on the Steam market. It does use Steam market prices, obviously, so third party marketplaces don't really apply to this. But I mean, it, it's still a really good way, though, to check overall market trends. Like, for example, Op Asimov Battle Scards, they've actually gone up in price by 0.60% in the last week. And field tested ones have gone up by 6%. Nice. So yeah, glove cases have gone up, breakout cases have gone up, clutch cases have gone up, AK red lines have gone up, but shattered web cases have dropped. So have CSGO weapon cases and AK Phantom Disruptors, all of those have dropped. But these numbers do change all the time, so just keep that in mind. My only real complaint about the site is it's a little difficult to find specific skins, because if you try to look up, let's just say like Hyper Beast, if you want to check out the Hyper Beast, it doesn't work. Like you have to copy and paste the exact name of the item from Steam. But for example, if I actually try to copy and paste like the exact name from Steam, oh, it actually works. So it's pretty hit or miss. Some skins work and other skins don't. Because I tried to look up the Deagle Print stream earlier and I wasn't able to find it. I feel like you know having a section up at the top where they show like you know pistols rifles smgs and heavies and have like all the skins in an easy to find way i think that would make it a lot better but you know that's just my piece of advice but overall it is still an incredibly useful tool for anyone looking to invest or trade in skins you can also check the volume too so basically the higher the volume the more of these that actually sell and over here up at the top you can actually see the overall market mood so you can see how many items are available in csgo over 14,000. that's that's actually kind of insane and it shows the trend over the last 24 hours of the overall like of every skin on sale in the market so apparently in the last 24 hours people have sold 1.2 million dollars worth of skins that's actually kind of crazy like considering valve gets 10 percent of that or 15 percent of that 24 losers and 24 gainers these are the skins that have actually dropped in price in the last 24 hours and these are the skins that have risen in price so actually more skins have gone up than gone down which is which is pretty good but obviously this site won't give you all the answers but it can definitely be an incredibly useful resource so if you guys want to go check it out the link is in the description down below and i want to thank you them again for sponsoring today's video and supporting the channel and let's get on to the next part of this video boys with all that being said, investing in CSGO skins can be a pretty good idea if you make the right decisions and also if you have a little bit of luck. 
because luck is a big part of the CSGO economy. And by the way, anybody can get into investing. Anybody can do it. But the more money you have, the easier it's going to be to start. But also the more risky it is because if the market crashes, you could potentially lose everything. So it all comes down to buying and selling at the right time to maximize your profits. And ultimately, profit is profit. So if you make profit, don't beat yourself up over it because you still made some money. There's a lot of really toxic people in the CSGO trading community who will just harass you and bully you if you don't make like a million dollars on a skin, if you double your money and you're happy with that, hell yeah, more power to you. Go for it. Anyways, though, so the first type of investments are obviously case investments. So these are the easiest to get into. So they're more of a long-term investment because, for example, actually back in the day in 2014, I bought some breakout cases for three cents each. And then I also bought some esports 2014 cases for about seven cents each. About two to three years after that, I ended up selling the esports cases for about 80 cents each. So I made 10 times my money. So originally, I invested $20 and I made about 120. So not too bad. And then for the breakout cases, since I, bu I bought about four or 500 of them for three cents, kind of wish I bought more, but you know, what, whatever. I sold about more than half of them for like $300, which was just way more than I was expecting. But yeah, cases are, they're like a nice, cheap, long-term investment. So you want to basically sit on them and then wait for the prices to rise. And it can take a very long time for that to happen. So just if you want to invest in cases, you want to buy them when they're pretty cheap and then just hold on to them for a really long time. And as long as the game is still popular, then it might be able to make some profit. But yeah, I mean, but obviously cases are really cheap. So buying them in bulk is incredibly easy. And the cases you want to invest in all really depend on the current drop pool. The current cases that drop more consistently aren't, they're not going to rise in price as much as the ones that drop more rarely or the ones that don't drop at all. Because it's all about supply and demand. The more supply you have, the lower the demand and the, the lower the prices. But when you start to add scarcity and rarity, that kind of increases the prices. So cases that are more rare are actually more likely to go up in the future because there's just less of them to go around and people are still interested in, you know, picking them up so they can open them or, you know, hold on to them or, or whatever. Also, to a certain extent, the price of the case also determines the price of the skins as well. So the higher the price of the case, the more expensive the skins are. But yeah, obviously, though, rare cases are like you can make more profit off of rare cases, but common cases are more stable. The best way to do it is to pick up cases that are three cents that are relatively old, and then you want to just wait for them to eventually go up in price. But there's a chance that that might never happen. I mean, it happened with the breakout cases, so I think it could happen again. Yeah, so in my opinion, cases can be a good investment, but they're not like 100% guaranteed to be amazing. Next up, let's talk about the cheap skin investments. I feel like it's very difficult to actually make profit off of them because, you know, they have a really low price and they're probably going to maintain their low price unless the overall market of the game grows. So I guess if Counter-Strike grew and like, you know, the skins became way more popular and more people wanted to pick up the skins, that would naturally cause the prices to increase. But if the numbers drop, if people stop playing Counter-Strike, then that could cause the prices to decrease. So I feel like cheap skins are way more risky and you're less likely to actually make profit off of it. But I mean, you still can get lucky, obviously. And in my opinion, and by the way, take it with a grain of salt, but the skins that typically do go up in price are the ones that are really popular, the ones that people tend to use a lot because I mean, well, you know, people like them, they're popular, people buy them. And of course, the more people who buy the skins, the higher the price goes. So basically, if you want to invest in cheap skins, it has to look really cool and it has to be popular and it also has to be really it has to be relatively old and relatively rare as well that's the recipe for success obviously in my opinion i think cheap skins are the hardest to make profit off of next up though let's talk about expensive skins expensive skins obviously are more expensive and they're way harder to get but obviously they do have a much higher potential for profit so for example like the dragon lores they went from fifteen hundred dollars for factory new to over seven thousand dollars in just a couple short years. Why did that happen? I mean, well, the main reason why it happened was because mainly because of Chinese collectors. Also, because of the last operation, Dragon Lores stopped dropping. So the circulation of Dragon Lores is finite. There's only a certain amount of Dragon Lores in existence, and there probably aren't going to be more unless people trade up for them, but they need knights for that. They can only make so many. I didn't even mention the fact that also there's accounts that do get trade banned that have Dragon Lores, and every time a Dragon Lore gets trade banned, that's one less Dragon Lore in existence, causing all the ones that are still in existence to go up in price. So it's just, there's a lot to it. It's a very complicated thing. And then of course, last year when Operation Shattered Web happened, that actually changed the economy a little bit. That changed the CSGO economy because a lot of the skins from the older collections 
because you couldn't get them in drops anymore, they actually went up in price. And the skins from the Shattered Web Collection actually did incredibly well. Like the gun gear is like over $4,500 for factory new. So it's pretty much like the runner up for like the second most expensive op in the game. Because we've only had one operation with the Shattered Web skins, uh, the prices are at kind of a weird point right now because we've only had one operation and you know, gun gears are like $4,000 and Wild Lotuses are like 2,000 and you have like the prints and everything and you have all these skins. When the next operation happens and when they bring the skins back for another round, more people are actually gonna get access to them and more people are going to you know pick them up and that's going to increase the overall supply of them obviously it could help make them more popular which could increase prices but obviously since there's going to be more in circulation that could also drop the prices too so gun gears and wild lotuses and all those skins they could drop when the next operation happens just because more people are getting them and that's kind of the downside that's like one of the big risks like nobody really knows what's going to happen it's all like you know i'm just kind of speculating right now and also keep in mind as well when it comes to investing in expensive skins valve could just add another trade hold or they could do something to make trading more difficult that could destroy the economy like that could just that could hurt so many skins so no matter what you do it's relatively risky it still could pay off obviously like you know you can still make some easy stonks but guys let's talk about the events that have actually impacted the market the most usually the trend that csgo follows is the prices usually rise and rise and rise and then valve does something to make the bubble pop and then the skins drop and then they go back up again eventually because counter strike is genuinely a good game and it has i feel like it has a very bright future ahead of it but do you guys remember back in 2018 and around April when they when Valve added the seven day trade hold that caused the market to crash like dragon lords were like three four thousand dollars then and then they crashed down to like I don't know I think like two thousand dollars or something so many skins dropped in price by like 30 to 50 percent one of the main reasons why they did that was because a lot of people were panic selling when they started to notice that the skins were like dropping fast they were like oh my god I gotta get my money out because they thought that was the end of counter-strike but you know I understood like counter-strike's a good enough game to where people are still gonna play it regardless you know if the skins are like less expensive because it's, it's it's a good game over time that prediction was actually Actually correct and the prices did end up going up and now the prices are higher than they've ever been in the history of this game so i feel like the last good time to invest in skins was actually right after the seven day trade hold when people were panic selling because you could buy you could get some really nice skins for pretty damn cheap and if you held on to them for like you know until now then you could have like doubled tripled or even quadrupled your money easily but that wasn't the only thing that valve did to hurt the uh, csgo economy they also did another thing to basically get rid of the ability to trade keys all the keys that were in circulation all the keys that you could get access to you know they were still tradable but any new keys that people bought directly from valve those were not tradable and they, they also weren't marketable so if you buy a key from valve you can't sell it on the market and you cannot trade it so you have to unbox it like before that the main currency for trading was keys but after that people in the trading community decided to change it to arcanas which are like these like 15 20 items in dota 2 but valve did something else valve actually added a seven day trade hold to arcanas to make it harder for people to trade and this this had a big impact on the trading community it made it a lot harder for people to trade just because like keys and arcanas were a really consistent way to you know make sure you're making profit like you could essentially trade like a skin for let's just say like i don't know 15 keys and then you could try to trade it for like 16 keys and then try to make like one key profit and then use that profit to try to make even more profit but without keys and without a consistent kind of like currency in place it's a lot harder to do that it makes trading a little more complicated because instead of trading skins for arcanas or keys you have to trade skins for skins and you might not know the price of those like you might not necessarily know like the price and like the trends of those skins so that's why item stat is a really useful tool so you can see which skins are going up and which skins are going down and you can use that to kind of make the best decision possible but valve out of this seven day trade hold to arcanas and that was kind of annoying but why does valve do it why does valve do things to hurt the trading community well i mean they're not necessarily trying to hurt the trading community there's just a huge gambling market around CSGO skins. And obviously Valve doesn't want anything to do with that. Valve doesn't want it to happen. So they try to make it more and more difficult to, you know, to, to do all that stuff. Like the seven day trade hold essentially made it way harder for sites to operate. Because before when people deposited the skins, people could actually withdraw them like almost immediately. But now like you have to have it sitting on the bots for seven days. And then after seven days, like you can withdraw it. Valve's official answer to that was actually to stop scammers. They wanted to make it, you know, harder for people to get scammed. So if you do get scammed, there's a seven day trade hold. So the scammer can't just immediately trade the skins to their alt account. So, and I, I guess that's a fairly reasonable answer. I guess, you know, that, that, that does make sense. But overall, like what I'm trying to get at here is you never know what's going to happen. Like the CSGO and like the CSGO trading economy is pretty inconsistent and you never know what's around the corner. So just 
keep that in mind. Investing in CSGO skins isn't going to be around forever. And this is just kind of a temporary thing that we have right now. I mean, hey, I love collecting skins and I, I definitely I'm a huge fan of like, you know, the overall skin economy. I think it's a great thing for the game and I think it's a great thing for the community. But anyways, though, so there's lots of great skins to invest in. But from personal experience, honestly, the most profit that I've made was definitely from trading high tier skins, especially like pattern based skins like blue gems. Um, like I've traded multiple scar pattern blue gems for some pretty decent profit. And then of course I had the Karambit blue gem number three at seven well worn. I got it for about 13k cash value in skins and I ended up selling it for 18k cash. So I made about $5,000 in profit off of one skin, which is honestly kind of insane. And then another time I made like $500 profit off of a Navaja knife blue gem. And like, I don't know, I feel like for me personally, blue gems have definitely been the most profitable investments for me, but I also got kind of lucky too, because I, I got them at a relatively low price and then they started going up. Yeah. Nowadays, like they could drop in price tomorrow because people might be like, oh, these are these suck. Lol. And ultimately, it's all driven by the, the overall market. It's driven by the entire community. And that's the beauty of it. Valve doesn't decide the prices of skins. We do. The community does, which I feel like, you know, gives us so much more freedom. But overall, guys, though, happy investing. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful. Anyways, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, share, subscribe, click that bell icon and make sure to check out my second channel. Join the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter. Just check out all the links in the description down below. And I want to thank item stat again for sponsoring today's video and i want to thank you guys so much for watching because without you guys i wouldn't be in this position so i'm just i just want to thank each and every single one of you all right anyways guys it's turbo and i'm out peace